here from West Lafayette, Indiana, and Oregon always travels well. Oregon next year will be a member of the Big Ten, and we are underway. Gabby Gonzalez with the opening serve. First swing of the match, Eva Hudson for Purdue. Terminated on the right side by Morgan Lewis. Right away, one of Oregon's go-to attackers, Morgan Lewis on that right side. She has the ability to take over a match when she's hot. Lewis, all Pac-12 selection. Also all region, the all region teams came out all across the country this past week. Gonzalez serving again. Chicoin with the receive. The block is there. Number 15 in white, Mimi Collier. We should call her name a lot tonight. Mimi Collier is one of the best in all of the country. She was National Freshman of the Year last season, but what she's done so well this year is work on her all-around game. She's not just one-dimensional in attacking. She can do it all. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, because Eva Hudson, number 17, who's hitting right now, she and Collier were the front runners for that National Freshman of the Year and now having fantastic sophomore seasons. Chicoin, speaking of freshmen, number two in black, one of the best in the country. Skimmerhorn keeps it alive. Chicoin. Pukas the back set and terminated again by Morgan Lewis. She's got two kills. That's a matchup that Hannah Pukas wants to exploit all night long. With Chloe Chicoin up front for Purdue, for Purdue. she's only 5'10", so if they can get that right side going all night when Chicoin's front row, they're going to do it. Gonzalez came into the program from Ohio State. All Pac-12 as well this year. Anderson with the set. Hudson can't get it to go down. There's the off speed. Hudson runs it down in the back row. Chicoin will attack. Hits into the Oregon block. Now that right side has been lethal for Oregon here in the opening set. Hugus is going to get Lewis going as often as she can. With Chloe Chicoin again, 5'10 up front. Morgan Lewis towers over her. Gabby Gonzalez last season was all Big Ten. I just mentioned she's all Big 12 this year. Anderson runs it down. She's stuck by McGee. And Purdue wins their first point of the match. Purdue led by Dave Shondell, who is the longest tenured head coach in the Big Ten, has his tournament in the team in the tournament for the 18th time, 11th regional for Dave Shondell, the son of a Dr. Don Shondell, considered the father of Midwest volleyball, one of the royal families in the sport of indoor volleyball. Uh, Chicoin pushes that serve out, and Purdue's yet to get going yet. They're not firing on all cylinders. This is a Purdue team that is as competitive as it comes. You look at a player like Chloe Chicoin, she's got that look in her eyes. She knows even if this team's down, they can turn it on. Number one ready to recruit in the country. First time Purdue's ever had the top recruit in the country. And Dave Shondell says she never leaves the gym. She is a relentless pursuer of being the best. Big swing by Collier. She unloads. There's that fast Oregon offense going to work. Even 10 feet off the net, Hannah Pukas is going to push these outside sets with speed. That does not allow Purdue's block to close, opening up seams for the outsides. The Libero, Georgia Murphy, one of the captains, also a three-time All-Pac-12 selection. Anderson, Hudson, and Hudson on the board with her first kill. Can't leave Hudson one-on-one. -on -one. That's exactly what's going to happen, an explosive kill right to the middle of the court. She's a player that knows if she's got that open net, she can unload on it. Eva Hudson, a unanimous first-team All-Big Ten selection. Again, just a sophomore last year, close to being National Freshman of the Year. Skimmerhorn with a service error. And Matt Ulmer leading the Oregon team. Matt in his seventh season, fourth time he's had the Ducks in a regional in his tenure as the head coach. Took them to the regional final last year. Last year, this team upset Nebraska and then had a match point against Louisville before ultimately falling to the Cardinals, denying them that trip to the National Semis. Hudson can't get that, it's an ace. Luckily for this Oregon team that might have lost that game last season, they brought back so many different starters to come back. Take it off. Look, Eva Hudson is one of the toughest players in the game. If she can play through anything, she will. McClellan serving right after the ace. Another good serve. I think she's fine. 
That she looks pretty good to me. All right, no missteps there. Eva Hudson uh, will be calling her Dr. Hudson one day, an aspiring dermatologist. Her mom's an anesthesiologist looking to go to med school. All these smart players, Sam. Yeah. All we do is talk. I think she's got a little pro volleyball in her future, too. Oh, yeah. Collier attacking. Hudson bumps it over. Puka settles under it. And straight to the floor goes Carson Bacon. Oregon's quick offense going to work. It's not allowing Purdue to find anyone up front to even get a touch on it. All these players one-on-one -on -one easily putting it down to the middle of the court. Bacon touches 10-7. Collier back to serve. Again, last year's National Freshman of the Year. First player in program history to win that award for Oregon. And a net violation on Purdue. Oregon's going to get that point. Purdue coming down on the top of the tape or pushing over just a little bit too much on these blocks. It's important as a blocker to know spatial, spatial awareness of how far you are from the net and how far your hands have to come back down. A bad break for the Boilermakers. Oregon up 10 to three. Hudson over the block. Pucas pushes it out to the pin and the tip over by Gonzalez. Hudson gets into the block. Pucas back row set and attack. Collier. You guys will find Collier whether she's in the front or the backcourt. It's just as explosive no matter where she is. And that open net, man, she's going to barrel right through it. And what's ironic about that is last year it was hit ball hard. That's what Matt yeah. Ulmer would say to her. This year she's a much more versatile player as Colvin terminates for Purdue. But Collier not just getting kills this year. She's passing so much better. She's a more well-rounded player this year. Well, she also had Brooke Nunneveller to lean on just a little bit and carry some of that other weight, one of the best to ever do it at Oregon. Now she's having to handle a lot more on her side. She had to up her well her game. Colvin is stuffed by Bacon. Point Ducks. Carson Bacon, one of those middles that's not just good offensively or defensively, but good both offensively and defensively. Her ability to affect the ball on both sides is elite. Chatting with Matt Ulmer, he said that she has the quickest lateral first step he's ever seen for someone her size. She's 6'4". Hudson into the block. McGee got most of that. Chacoin hit hands. Off the slide, that attack is missed by Kara McGee. A good break for Purdue because Oregon does not make a lot of errors in their game. That being just the first one of the night, still hitting well above 500. And this Oregon team so good defensively. They hold their opponents to 149 hitting. That's top 10 in the nation. They're fifth in blocks. Pucas gets it to Gonzalez. Colvin setting to coin. Gonzalez crushes it from the left pin. Beautiful swing from Gonzalez out of system with two big blockers in front of her. Yeah, they might have touched the net, but this was a beautiful swing coming right inside of them. Gonzalez, another player that's been uh, struggling with a little bit of an injury, a little nagging ankle issue, but seems to be okay. She practiced full strength yesterday, just has to get it warmed up. Chacoin, whoa! our first look at that high flying attack by Chloe Chicoin. Chicoin's 5'10 Sam but she touches 10 4. It's <laughs> unbelievable the things that she can do as an outside. She is so explosive when that ball's in the right spot. She knows that she can go up and take a rip. And she's one of those players that when she gets a kill it's always highlight worthy. There's no such thing as just a routine kill from her. Mm -hmm. This is sent over by Hornan. Oh, quick. McGee crushes it off the set from Pucas. Oregon is such a good ball control team. That's why these middles are able to have the success they have this season, because when the pass is there, Pucas can get them involved, and they put the ball down easily. McGee, one of the other transfers into this program from Baylor. In fact, her sister Elise still plays for the Bears. Baylor had a nice run in the tournament this year. That serve goes out. Point Purdue. Purdue is one of three teams that have beaten Wisconsin this year. Watch this hard top spin serve from Shacoin. Yeah. 
She coined 38 aces this season. And that's put down on the right side again by Morgan Lewis. Remember, she had those two quick kills early and now gets another one. Lewis, such an efficient attacker. She had no errors in that game against Hawaii. You went 14 for 21. Lewis from Carlsbad, California, had 14 kills, including the match winner against Hawaii in the second round. Purdue and Oregon had very impressive first and second round matches. And for this Oregon team against Hawaii, at one point in that first set, you might have looked at the score and say, oh, they handled them well with the sweep. They were down 18-11 yeah. in set one. That tells you what you need to know about this experienced squad and how badly they won it. They also had five aces against the Rainbow Wahine. Good D by the Ducks. Point Oregon, and they extend the lead here in this opening set. It's been all Oregon so far. They're up 10, hitting 500. And Dave Shondell's going to take another timeout. They're called Alan Strong on that right lapel. And uh, Morgan is doing her father and her family proud with the way she's handled that situation, especially the way she started this match tonight. But I just admire her so much for being able to carry on and uh, with that just so recently happening. And of course, it's uh, V Week at ESPN and ties in the need to provide funds for research. We partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, this game-changing research. It helps save lives. You can join the fight by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donations go to cancer research. Ducks right now up 17 to 8, but the Boilermakers trying to catch fire out of the timeout. That actually is going to be Oregon's point, and it's another 10-point lead. Purdue just not looking like they've woken up yet. They've struggled so far to begin this match, both offensively and especially defensively, as Oregon's hitting 474. Purdue hasn't scored consecutive points. Now, you, you were telling me, Emily, that you were concerned for Purdue because of the way Oregon plays. Could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, one reason why Oregon has success is because of the speed of their offense. It's not just an issue with Purdue. It's every opponent Oregon faces. It's so difficult to defend because of how fast the offense is. Blockers have to be disciplined and get out so quickly. Otherwise, Oregon's left one-on-one. -on -one. Dave Shundell making a change at setter, taking the freshman Taylor Anderson out and replacing her with number six, Lauren Poulter. She's a grad student from Aurora, Colorado, transferred in from Colorado. That's her setting Hudson, and the block is there. Pukas and Bacon combined, and Oregon has just had an answer for everything Purdue's thrown at him so far. And such a good up from Georgia Murphy, keeping this alive to force the pressure all on Purdue and force them to try to make a play, resulting in the point later on. Yeah, we got to get some Libro love out yeah, there. Yeah, give me Libros, they're all over the place. Couldn't have a team without them at this level. Whoa! Raven Colvin, boom! Hello, Raven Colvin. That's what she can do when she's up front. When Purdue's in system, they can get Raven Colvin the ball, and she can make explosive plays like this, just putting holes in the floor. Now, Raven had an accounting exam scheduled today. I don't know if she ended up taking it or not, but Purdue is in exams this week. Skimmerhorn sends that over. Oregon up 20 to 9, and Collier just keeps pouring it on. Oregon dominating this first set. And a fake out by Hannah Pukas up front. She looked like she was going to take that ball over on two. That held Purdue's middle just a little bit longer to give Collier an open net. Collier dreamed of coming to Oregon, even had green LED lights in her bedroom in high school till Matt Ulmer offered. Gonzalez attacks, nice block, and Purdue looking to get something going here. Good read by Raven Colvin, automatically going outside and releasing early to close it up to her right side pin and dive those hands back inside. Hudson back to serve. Nice serve, good receive by Murphy. Collier out of the back row. Hudson sends it. Pukas pushes it out to Gonzalez. Skimmerhorn, the libero with the dig. 
Oh, what a dig by Skimmerhorn to keep that rally alive. Skimmerhorn is one of the most impressive Libros to watch in the country because she makes plays that you don't think anyone can make. If you see that ball coming down, she flies in there out of nowhere to keep it alive. One of the best defensive players in Purdue volleyball history, hands down. Bacon off the slide. Even Skimmerhorn can't dig that. Hannah Pukis is just faking out Purdue's middles and Felicia Coyne on that ball as well. She's doing such a great job acting like she's going to take this ball over. And then that's an open net for whichever hitter she sets it to. Elise Ferreira in to serve. Her dad, Carl, was the head coach of Oregon from 2000 to 2004. She came over and spoke to us yesterday at practice. Nice block in the middle by McGee. And Oregon has just made it look easy here in this first set. Oregon feels like they're playing at a tempo that Purdue just hasn't caught up to. And it's not just the speed of their offense. Defensively, they're in great positions. Again, a veteran Oregon team, eight seniors. Matt Ulmer says that the comfort of that is that they just never get rattled. Whereas Purdue is one of the youngest teams in the country. I, I've been so impressed with Dave Shondell has been able to do with this Purdue team this year with the starting three freshmen. They were number 12 in the RPI, 7 and 3 against top 25 RPI teams. This Purdue team is built for the future. Colvin dives in. Chicoin tools the block. Before this Purdue squad, you really are building for that future. The only player that you're really losing is Maddie Skimmerhorn. Yes, one of the better liberos, but they have people behind her that are going to step into that, like an Allie Hornung, who's been a difference maker this season. Purdue finished with Penn State tied for third in the Big Ten this year. Collier. Not really much she could do with that. And Colvin trying to get her team fired up. This set might be a little too tough to come back in, but Purdue looking toward the second set. Got to get some momentum, and that's not going to help. Service error, that's the third already for Purdue, and it gives Oregon set point. So the good news for Purdue is they can only get better. Oregon has been dominant in this opening set. Only three hitting errors. It's got to go over. Pukas with the set to McGee. And McGee ends the set from the middle. 14 total kills for the Oregon Ducks because that last set wasn't what we normally see from this Purdue team that is as competitive as they come. They're not willing to lay down. They're going to continue to fight, but they got to do it starting now. Again, Purdue on a nine-match win streak. They won 13 of their last 15 matches. Chicoin ripping the serve to start us off. Oregon played almost a flawless opening set, and they start out right away with a McGee kill in the middle, that's her third. And part of the reason why Oregon looked so flawless that last set was because they were in system at such a high clip. Purdue has to put a little bit more service pressure in to try to take Oregon out of that quick offense. And right now, Purdue does not have any aces, three service errors. Oregon, two aces, three errors. You'll take that ratio. Hudson attacking, going for hands, looking for the touch, and she got it. Smart shot by Eva Hudson going up, aiming right at the fingertips and just sending it right off. Hudson leads the Boilermakers with four kills here to start the second. Already had 16 swings. That's the most in the match for either team. Pukas setting Collier. Excuse me, that's Lewis. Hudson. Gonzalez tried to roll that over. Nice dump by the setter Anderson who's back in the lineup. Coach Shondell took her out for a moment and the freshman responding. Such a veteran play for a freshman up front knowing exactly when to take that dump over to where Oregon can't touch it. Anderson had 60 assists in the second round against Marquette. That's a Purdue NCAA record. It's also the highest for any Big Ten setter this year. That was a thunderous attack by Morgan Lewis. She has been player of the match for Oregon so far. Lewis just gets on the ball so fast from the time that it hits her hand she steps down so quickly to bring so much power. 
five kills on nine swings no errors a couple of digs as well that had been produced first lead of the match quickly erased Hudson got hands again she's hit high hands in her last two kills and Eva Hudson has to continue to hit high hands because Oregon had so many blocks during that first set but who had to make that adjustment swing a little bit higher and not right down into Oregon and she's uh, going up against Oregon's Mimi Collier those two were the two of the top freshmen in the country last year Collier sends that back to the middle of the court Hudson cuts it sharp and just missed it point Oregon well that's a good shot though from Eva Hudson that was a shot that she had a wrist away cut shot right inside that 10 foot line just missed it by a few inches a little disappointed you didn't go for the dig there it sailed right by your head yeah I could have put up my hands but it probably would have came back and hit me in the face so we're both better off Anderson setting Colvin Colvin's an instant highlight reel as well Colvin's so good when they have this pass. Anderson does a great job of putting that ball right in a window for her to hit it. And even if it's not perfect, Colvin can adjust to it. Purdue starting off much better this set. And Gonzalez gets the touch for the kill for the Ducks. Gonzalez is also no stranger to playing in these big environments. She might have just transferred in this season, but she's another player that has played in a regional final with Ohio State last season. This whole team for Oregon, they've all played in regional finals. Now there's so much, uh, not just experience in terms of what class they are, but actual NCAA tournament experience on this Oregon side. Hudson getting in the groove. Hudson starting to find her rhythm. We thought it might be a little bit shaky after we saw her limp off the court earlier in that first set. But man, she has not missed a beat since. She looks good. So Purdue up 5-4. Hudson's actually had three kills this set. Three of Purdue's five points. Colvin about to serve. Colvin first team all Big Ten. Oh, Gonzalez, that was such a good set. Impossible to miss it from that. Hannah Pugas makes these sets look surgical. It's in the right perfect window. When you run a fast offense, that ball has to be perfect because the hitter is already in the air when they're making contact. It was Pucas serving. Hudson dug by Pucas. Pucas puts up the set. And terminated on the right side by Lewis. Lewis found her groove early and she has continued to just hammer away at some of these swings. Pucas is putting her in great situations, allowing her the window for space to hit and make those hits a little bit rangy. Lewis was on the all Louisville region team last year when Oregon went to the regional final and had match point against Louisville. And that's been a big motivator for this Oregon team this year as Wollard gets the kill for the Boilermakers. First time we said her name. We saw this Oregon team last season upset Nebraska and then become so close to potentially taking down Louisville just one point away in those regional finals. This Oregon team has a chip on their shoulder. They've been tied at every point. Ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes, and now Chicoin breaks the tie. She just sends that over easily on the overpass. Look for Purdue to continue to throw in those short serves because that throws off the rhythm of some of these attackers, not allowing Oregon to use their speed. Chicoin led all freshmen this year in kills per set, also in points per set. Oh, that was easy. Meyer says, thank you very much. Easy put down from Mortis Myers up front on this overpass. Just a little tap did it. Myers, another player that's had to battle back from a serious injury and started her first match of her career back in August, has taken off throughout the season. No answer for Morgan Lewis so far. Seventh kill on 12 swings, no errors. Much better handle from Oregon on this pass, allowing them to bring Lewis inside just a little bit and confuse Purdue's blockers. Boilermakers up by a point. Oregon won the first set 25-14. Winner meets Wisconsin Saturday night. Chicoin. Well, that's tight to the net. Puka saved it. Murphy and McGee with a crafty shot in the middle. 
Oregon is just owning the net up front, whether it's a 50-50 ball and these overpasses going up or getting block touches. Oregon's working so hard to win that net battle. We're tied at eight. Gabby Gonzalez back to serve. Gonzalez actually from Marietta, Georgia. And an ace by Gonzalez. That's her 25th of the season. Gonzalez is that big moment kid. You know, she always finds a way to win, whether it's crafty or just with power, she finds a way. And a float serve running in to get it is Horning. Hudson dug by Pucas. Nice dig. Gonzalez taps it over. Chicoin. Chicoin again. Perfectly placed. That shows you just how high of IQ player Chloe Chicoin is. Even though she might be a freshman, her volleyball knowledge is so good. She didn't get that first tip right over the block, so she sent it past the blockers, past that defender, into the back corner. By the way, she also leads the team in aces. Serves Gonzalez. Puka saves it, gets it to McGee. Hudson attacks. And Hudson with a kill for Purdue. And the Boilermakers retake the lead. Eva Hudson has really turned it on here in set two, avoiding the big block of Oregon in front of them and finding ways around it. Hudson with seven kills now. Ties Lewis for Oregon. And Lewis trying to take the overall lead. But it's Hudson. Calming the chaos, that's exactly what you want. Maybe it's a chaotic play happening on your side. Eva Hudson doesn't care. She's gonna go up and take a big rip at it. Purdue rapidly improving, and the hudson Chicoin duo has been one of the best in the country this year in terms of their lethalness. Lourdes Myers, another kill. Right place at the right time. And or getting Oregon out of system, they're throwing in a lot of short serves. That's disrupting Oregon's rhythm. Chicoin back to serve now for the Boilermakers. Nice serve. That's an ace. Didn't make it over the net. Purdue again just bullets from the end line, finding ways to really test out and exploit Oregon service. Even in this rotation with just two passers, it's easier to hit those seams. Five unanswered points by Purdue to take this four point lead. Puka setting Collier. Star to star. Collier finding a way to muscle her way out of that rotation for them. It wasn't a perfect pass, but she's okay cleaning up that junk and swinging high. Georgia Murphy will go back to serve from the Woodlands, Texas. One of the captains, they have three captains on this team. Carson Bacon and Pucas, the other two. Hudson tips. Just too much. Morgan Lewis adding to her kill total. She's up to eight now with no errors. It's like Morgan Lewis doesn't even know how to make an error. She hasn't made one for now two games straight. Yeah, she's been so fun to watch. And the 14 kills against Hawaii, including the match winner to get to the regional semis. Chicoin with a tip pancake by Murphy. Anderson tries to save it, but to no avail, Point Oregon. How about that cut shot from Amy Collier up front? It didn't have to be hard. She just put in an easy little roll shot off of the great pancake from Georgia Murphy to save that. It's just the finesse that Oregon uses to outpower their opponents. Oregon back to within a point. They won the first set 25-14. Hudson sends it out of play. Went through a few hands. Hudson's really working that high hand shot. Oregon's defenders have to stay a little bit deeper in the back row because if they're getting a touch off it, it's going to go above their heads. So how about the efficiency in this set, Emily? Yeah, yeah Purdue's hitting 545 and Oregon's hitting 526. And yeah, not a lot of defense <laughs> being played up front for sure. 
Collier goes down the line and got the touch. Point Oregon. Beautiful swing from Collier up front. Seeing that hand there just going right off the fingertips of Purdue setter. Collier just over four kills per set this year. Incredible server as well. That was McClellan who just put the serve in. Chicoin rifles it into the perfect spot. Such a difficult ball for Chicoin to hit as well. This coming from behind her head. It's kind of a blind swing going up. She can't see the block or really the other side of the court. She still finds a way to get on top of it and unload. Can you imagine what she's going to be like when she's a senior? It's scary what yeah. she's going to do to teams. And especially, you know, standing at 5'10", that makes it just that more impressive because she doesn't have the height advantage. She has to outwork everyone. And apparently that is exactly what she does. Collier terminates from the left pin. You know Mimi is not actually her name. What is it, Sam? Morgan. Her mom and dad had an iguana named Mimi. <laughs> but when she was younger, she went by Morgan. And then she switched to Mimi. And then when she was in high school, she went to Morgan. And then when she got to Oregon, there was another pin hit her named Morgan. So she's like, I'm Mimi. She's forced to go back. So it's, a, it's quite a tale. You're full of fun back today, huh? She is uh, so fun to listen to. Her parents seem like they're just so much fun as well. Her mom, Nicole, was an All-American for Long Beach State. Her dad was an All-American water polo player, also competed for Team USA. And Morgan Collier got to compete on the U21 team last year and earned a USA backpack just like her dad. She said her dad had taunted her for years with this USA backpack. And so finally she has one that's even nicer than the one he had. Oh, that's good. You just put it right up to dad and say, <laughs> look what I did. Dave Shondell, one of the top coaches in this sport, trying to coach this young team back from losing that first set. And it has been a very good set for the Boilermakers so far here in the second. Been very back and forth for both sides. Each side able to side out pretty quickly. The passing is there. And coach Shundell again, he's the longest tenured head coach in the Big Ten. This is 21st season. His team in the NCAA tournament, they've been hitting 342 through their first two matches. Pukas takes it over, saved by Anderson. Pukas with the set to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, it, it's not what she wanted to do, but it worked. And then Chicoin finally tools the block for the Boilermaker point. Such a smart play from Chloe Chicoin, identifying the setter up front with her, not one of their better blockers for Oregon, so she can go after those hands time and time again. McGee with the serve receive. And uh, Purdue is over the net. Oregon's going to get that point. Ortis Myers just a little bit too aggressive on this play. Hannah Pukas is going up to set this ball, not over the plane of the net. But Myers just reached over it to try to take it from her. Can't do that. Error of aggression. Pukas serving. Anderson settles under it. Left-handed attack. That was Haney. And Oregon trying to come through here and catch Purdue. And this is youth versus experience. Purdue the youthful team, Oregon the experienced team. Anderson's setting Lourdes. Gonzalez. Oregon doing really well in these transition plays, getting the ball right up to Pukas, running that fast offense outside, and Gonzalez, just one of the many players that's been able to find the floor tonight. We are Oregon a number two seed in this region. Purdue a number three seed. Wisconsin is the top seed in the region. That's why they're hosting. Hudson tried to push it into the corner. It's going to be tight. Lewis dug by Skimmerhorn. McGee got the block. The ball just drifts over. Collier, no stopping that. 
When you watch this Oregon offense, it's like they have a solution for anything. If they're out of system, they know like, the exact route that they're running. If they're in system, all these hitters are firing at all times. It is so difficult to defend. Oregon on a 4-0 run right now to take the one-point lead. Anderson to Chicoin. Chicoin unloads. Murphy took it and saved it. And then terminated by Gonzalez. But we got to give a little Libro love on that rally. Yeah, give me some joy. The Boilermakers need some kind of answer because during that second set, they were in it up until the end, and then they let it slip away with that long Oregon run. Oregon is hitting 492 in this match. Purdue 221. Must win set for the Boilermakers to keep their season alive. And we're underway with Oregon up 2 0. Off the slide, that's a good start, Lourdes Myers. Taylor Anderson needs to continue to find a way to get their middles involved because when they do, they can be lethal up front, hitting at such a high clip on the season. Skimmerhorn back to serve again, one of the uh, all time great defensive players in Purdue history. Came back to play this fifth year. Skimmerhorn with the float serve. Blocked by Colvin, but it went out of bounds. It was such a good read from Raven Colvin yeah. up front. She wanted that one. Those hands just not pressed over enough to finish it. So we've split the first two points here in this third set. Oregon and Purdue battling to see who will play Wisconsin Saturday night here in the field house. 8 Eastern on ESPNU. Hudson had a lot of runway and finally can celebrate. Purdue looking like they have just a little bit more fire than what, from what we saw in set one and during set two. That's exactly what they need to try to find some momentum and get back in this game. Season's on the line here in this set. Taylor Anderson, the freshman, has had a fantastic start to her career, two-time Big Ten setter of the week. Good up by Skimmerhorn. Hudson goes over the block. Fucus with the set to the pin. Collier then wins the joust for the duck point. Such a physical Oregon team up front. On these 50-50 balls, they almost always win them. They do such a great job tracking it and then pushing them down. Collier with 11 kills in this match. Good serve. Hudson got to send it over. Murphy with a dig. Collier, cross court, missed it wide, point Purdue. Collier barely missing that one, trying to slice it down, just missing by a few inches out of bounds. Matt Ulmer with a big fist pump at the end of that second set when we were down. That was quite a comeback. Pucas to Collier again, say that a lot. Chicoin, nice save by McClellan. And Collier, again, sharp angle. Even Skimmerhorn can't dig it. Collier continuing to rip that cross-court shot. She turns that right thumb down back into herself, and that cuts it right inside the 10-foot line. Collier, last year we mentioned National Freshman of the Year. She was also an All-American, first freshman in program history to get an All-American designation. Lefty attack by Heaney. Colvin. You give Purdue a free ball, that's exactly what's going to happen. Nailing that pass, allowing Raven Colvin to get involved in the offense. Even with two blocks in front of her, she can go past them. Well, Purdue actually had a, a good second set. They led for a lot of it, just could not finish. They got the early lead here in this must win third, or the season's over. Joust at the net. It's on the Purdue side. Pucas setting Collier, didn't clear the net. You mentioned how tight that second set was up until that long Oregon run at the end of turn, but Purdue's offense was really clicking during yeah. set two. They hit 375 just during that set alone. They're finding offensive rhythm, but man, it's tough to stop this Oregon offense. It is lightning fast. Emily Brown into the match for the first time serving. Transfer from Missouri. Hudson drifts over. Oh, how about that play by Lourdes Myers? A little no look. 
one, though, looky cookie up there from Myers, just going up, knowing exactly where this ball is and sending it right over with the throwdown. So Brown back to serve again. Brown getting close to third ace for the season. And now we'll come out. Brown from Lafayette, Indiana. Obviously uh, close to the Purdue campus, but actually started a career at Missouri. Oregon with four aces to offset those four errors. Al McGee had little trouble with that. McGee barely had to move for that one. She was on her way down. That hang time, though, where she's in the air, she can see that tip and throw it right back in Purdue's face. Al McGee, 6'5". That was easy. Ducks down by one to the Boilermakers. And Purdue into the net. Another point for Oregon, and Oregon has tied the score at six. And an illegal back row attack on this. With Taylor Anderson in the backcourt, she can't take that ball into the blocker's hands. Again, Oregon's won seven straight matches, 11 of their last 12. They finished second to Stanford in the Pac-12. For Oregon playing in the Pac-12, not a lot of people on the East Coast are able to watch Oregon because they play at a different time. But so many people very high on this Oregon team as a national championship threat. Chacoin hits into the block. Gonzalez tools the block. This Oregon team just so fine-tuned. And we talk about the experience that they have. One way that that plays out is the offense and the setter-hitter connections. They are so good. To have a lightning-fast offense, you have to have a setter that puts that ball in the perfect position. That's what Oregon does. Pukas back to serve. She's had 27 assists in this match so far. Oh, how about Anderson? Just stole that away from McGee. Anderson going up and being physical up front as a freshman. She knows when to take this ball over. If it's tight, she can go up and really challenge that block. Nice move by the freshman. Anderson, the setter. It's her second kill in this match. She's had three attacks. Chacoin serving. McGee, adjustment in midair, still alive. And Pukas takes it over. Skimmerhorn with a dig. Hudson terminates from the left side. Hudson, time and time again, going for that high hand shot. One of the best shots that you can have as an outside, just swinging high for fingertips to that back corner. Hudson in double digits. She's got 11 kills now on 36 swings. No one in the match has attacked more. Pukas and sent out of play successfully by Morgan Lewis. This is when Purdue needs to put in just a little bit tougher serves. Oregon has been nailing passes. That allows the speed of this offense to run, having seams in the block that Purdue just can't handle. Lewis, the second duck in double figures with 10 kills now. A great serve. Went right through the Purdue defense for the ace. Oregon's doing such a great job, not just targeting the seams in some of these passes, but really testing the serve receive to decide whether they're taking it with their platform or with their hands. Gonzalez having a good night serving another ace. She's actually had three aces so far in this match. Off the side, Lourdes Myers. Myers trying to go for high hands there, just missing a little bit long. That's because of the discipline block that Oregon's putting up low and over. Gonzalez on a nice service run right now for the Ducks. Let's put them in front by a point. To coin. Pukas setting the key, blocked by Myers. Beautiful solo stuff for Myers, identifying that even five feet off the net, Pukas can still get their middles going. So Lourdes Myers hangs tight and then goes right back into the line of approach, drifting through. Skimmerhorn back to serve for the Boilermakers. Pukas 
Another successful combination, Fucus to Lewis. It's been so successful this entire night. Lewis still without an error in this game, hitting well over 500. And the beneficiary of just some excellent sets by Pukas. Georgia Murphy back to serve for the Ducks. Oregon up one. They're trying to sweep Purdue. Purdue trying to keep their season alive. Winner faces Wisconsin Saturday. Hudson. Colvin goes over the block. Nice diving dig by Murphy. And finally, it is the Ducks Lewis picking up the point for Oregon. How about the hustle plays on yeah. both sides? It's not just the Liberos, but man, everyone is laying out for these balls, trying to transition them into some offense. But man, Morgan Lewis, I mean, she's just not human at this point. <laughs> well, Georgia Murphy's such a good match back in that Libero spot, diving all over the place. 12 digs in this match, six assists. Also has an ace. To coin. Uh, she missed it, overhit it. Let's see the just the speed she has. Timeout Purdue. Last round down 18 to 11 in set one against Hawaii. They turned it on and went in a long run to finish it. The exact same thing during set two here. Right now, a good run for Oregon. They won six of the last seven points, and Hudson stops that streak. Much needed side out for the Boilermakers. Well, if there's a Hudson, there's a way for Purdue. They're going to lean on her this entire night with their backs against the wall. They want one of their leaders to keep, the, keep putting the ball down. It's effective timeout by Dave Shondell. They side out right away. Good serve. Actually, that serves out by Poulter. Poulter, the grad transfer, played at Denver, sends that out of bounds. And McClellan, who had a ace earlier in the match, back to serve for the Ducks. Oregon actually arrived here in Madison on Monday, day earlier than the other teams because of the length of the journey. And so they are acclimated to the time change and seem very comfortable right now. Chacoin trying to get the team fired up after that attack. It was such a smart shot from Chloe Chacoin coming out of the back row, throwing in that roll shot just right over the top of the block. Really makes that defense talk about who's going to take it. Purdue within two. Got to win this set. Pukas to the joust. Colvin wins it. Colvin getting her team fired up up front. That's exactly what she wanted on that overpass off of the force ball from Eva Hudson. She just puts that away. Well, their makers within one. Pukas chases this down. Here's Collier. Collier going to attack again. Chacoin got the touch. Point Purdue. Taking a hard chest bump, too, off of Maddie Skimmerhorn <laughs> coming off of that. But this is what makes this Purdue team so fun. Yeah, they might be young, but they are ultra competitive. They celebrate harder than anybody. Good serve by Hudson. Nice dig by Hudson. And Chacoin's heating up. Such an explosive outside attacker. Yeah, she might be only 5'10", but man, she can get up and go right over you. You know, it you got a, a timeout by Ol Jill Gill doing her thing out there. Yeah, you were, you were talking about your coin being undersized at 5'10". So many outstanding undersized outside hitters across the country, including Jill Gill from, Jill and Gillian from Arkansas. And Purdue's up two now. I think those short but explosive outsides just give you a, a much better understanding for the game because they have to work so much harder than some of the rest of them. I think they're more fun to watch as well. Oh, yeah. Bacon off the slide. The Ducks needed that side out. And this is when you find out what both teams are made of. You have an experienced Oregon team that just wants to get done and focus on Saturday. And then for Purdue, their backs are against the wall. They're a young team still learning how to compete on this big of a stage. But they'll learn a lot about themselves if they can close this one out. Oregon has not lost a match this season when they've been up 
And a, a service error by Collier gives the Boilermakers a two point advantage here. Collier, 12 kills, nine digs, two blocks. Brown into serve for the Boilermakers. Targets Gonzalez. Gonzalez attacks. Point Oregon. And this is where Matt Ulmer said he's had so much comfort with the team he has this year in these pressure situations late in a set with the veteran squad. They just they don't panic. They don't get tight. Yeah, any high pressure situation, whether it's tight late in a set or maybe they're down a few sets, this team always continues to fight, and that's because of the experience that they have. Chacoin wastes no time. On Purdue's side, you got that inexperience, oh. but man, that's playing out in waves in terms of explosiveness and power. They're not afraid to go up and take a massive rip. They don't know any better. Well, there's such a will to win in Chloe Chacoin. And we're only getting a taste of it in her freshman season. Number one rated recruit in the country, Indiana's Gatorade High School Player of the Year last year. It's going to be tough. That hit the antenna. Point will go to Oregon. We talk about you know the inexperience of some of these players for Purdue, but players like Eva Hudson and Chloe Shaquan, they played for some of the best clubs with Muncieana and Circle City. They've played on the U national teams that have won medals. They've played on high stages. It might not be in college, but they've done it. Colvin trying to put the attack down. Excuse me, that's Myers. And terminating as Gonzalez on the left side. We're tied at 18. Gonzalez finding crafty ways to score, going right inside the blockers. Ninth tie. Hudson. That attack is long, untouched point Purdue. One of the rare misses by Morgan Lewis. In fact, that's her first hitting error of the match. Chacoin back to serve the season on the line for the Boilermakers. Pucas setting McGee. McGee not holding anything back on that play, just going up that ball in the perfect spot for her to take a massive rip on. Yeah, McGee came to this program from Baylor. She was an All-American honorable mention last year, led the Big 12 in blocks for set. She was actually top 10 in the nation last year in that category. Holter settles under it, and Colvin terminates on the right side. What a side out play. Eva Hudson nailing this pass. Poulter, beautiful set on the side. That allows Lourdes Myers to go up and take a massive swing. Purdue hits the 20 point mark first. They have to win this set to keep their season alive. Skimmerhorn floats that serve, but it doesn't clear the net. We're tied at 20. And this is the red zone. This is one when you want to make as few of errors as possible, whether it's attacking errors or from the service line. You've got to be clean in these last five points. Sixth service error by Purdue. The Libero, Murphy back to serve for Oregon. Set goes to 25, win by two. If Oregon wins it, match is over. Chacoin dug by Pucas. It's out, no touch, point Purdue. That ball barely out of bounds, but a really strong confidence swing from Lewis going over that defender. Well, Lewis had gone the first two sets with no hitting errors. She's had a couple here in the third. She's been carrying this team with Collier, both with 12 kills. Purdue up one, this is as close as they've gotten to winning a set. And that is successful, Lewis taking her frustration out on that next attack. I was just about to say we found out she was human, but man, that just looked as robotic as possible with how much power she's putting into that one. That was superhuman. We are tied at 21. McClellan serving. Hudson blocked. Oregon takes the lead. Now back and forth battle. This is when you want your defense to shine. Go up and press over just a little bit more on these blocks to finish it. 
McClellan getting ready to serve. Hudson saved by McClellan. Collier. The Ducks have won two straight and take a two point. Covered her coming back this year. That's one of the benefits of the NIL. And uh, she is one of the greatest defensive players all time for Purdue. And Purdue gets a much needed side out following that timeout there within one. It's the fight from Purdue, and a lot of that is from defense, just not willing to let the ball fall and keep it up. It ended an Oregon 3 0 run. Hudson serving. Nice serve. Free ball here for Purdue. Pucas with the set. Collier blocked. Heaney. A solo stuff for the freshmen stepping up when this team needed it most. Yeah, they might be young, but they can rely on that inexperience to play and play up in these big moments. Eva Hudson will be serving. Pucas off the side, Bacon. Match point, Oregon. Carson Bacon, the sixth year, stepping in and stepping up for this Oregon team at the perfect time to put it down. What's that fast offense you were referring to? Match point, Oregon, their first. And Collier misses the serve. We play on. Win by two from here on out. This is where Purdue needs to go back on the end line and hit a good aggressive serve, but at the end of the day, it has to be in. Emily Brown brought in to serve for Purdue. Pucas to Gonzalez. Dug by Brown. To Coyne, blocked. Ball still alive. Bacon blocked. Murphy puts it up. Gonzalez, nice dig by Brown. Chacoin. And Chacoin gives Purdue, wait just a second. I think we've got a challenge from. It is Oregon's point, and therefore they will have a match point. Second match point for the Ducks. Elise Ferreira in to serve. A senior from Bakersfield, California. Hudson takes the receive. Heaney got the touch. Point Purdue. Grace Heaney again stepping up in a really big moment when this team needed. She got the block earlier and this time taking a big hard swing at hands. Well for a split second Oregon thought they had won the match. But we are now tied at 25 win by two. Horning with the serve. Pucas to Gonzalez and Gonzalez terminates to give Oregon their third match point. Sneaky shot from Gonzalez going right inside the blockers. Anyone at this point in Oregon you feel comfortable getting the ball to in these big moments. Pucas will be serving one of the captains one of the All-Americans. Colvin off the slide. This has got to go over Collier dug by Skimmerhorn. Chacoin blocked. Chacoin again. Gonzalez over the block. Dumped down by McGee. Oh, wait a minute. She was over the net. Point Purdue. Go judgment call. I think it was a good call. 16th tie of this set. <laughs> and Oregon saw they've won the match twice. Morgan Lewis leaves no doubt and it's a fourth match point for the Ducks. Now you've got this Ducks team pretty fired up. Yeah. They want to end this game. 
Gonzalez is back to serve. Twice on match point, they've had a service error. We're tied at 27. Purdue's season is still alive. Skimmerhorn back to serve. Pukas setting Collier, and Collier gives the Ducks another match point. When Oregon's in these tight situations, they're spreading out the wealth. They're not just going for one player. It's so difficult for Purdue to key in on someone. The Libero, Georgia Murphy, will serve. Chacoin. The Ducks are into the last eight. 